Hello again. This is the second part of my MIDI converted CDJ1000. I have now finished my development board and have everything programmed to work in Traktor. Uh, all the buttons can be programmed however you like and any that have got LEDs can be turned on or off and they're programmed with the same MIDI codes as the buttons so to program them in you just press the button and press learn in Traktor. So I'm going to run through the basics of this. I haven't done all the buttons and I haven't done the rake release but I didn't think I need to do them at this moment. I've programmed the track search to just scroll through the playlist and then when we find a track that we want I've used the jog mode select button to load the track. We can see here the cue and play working and the LEDs flashing when Tractor tells them to turn on and turn off. Hot cues are programmed via the CDJ or via any other MIDI device that you have connected. The CDJs have a red, a green and uh, if you turn them both on you get a yellowy colour so you can have three different states of hot cue on the, the CDJ red is beat grid green is hot cue and yellow is loop if we press rec mode we can use that as a shift and we basically delete the hot cues so if we set the hot cue on the CDJ the same hot cue will now show on the Z2 mixer. So we can see we've got number one which is a grid, number two is a hot cue. As soon as you, you select the hot cue on one or the other they automatically update themselves exact same time. And you can see that they're nice and responsive. There's very little delay and difference between the two devices. I'm really sorry about the music. It was a generic track that was part of tractor so I'm hoping it doesn't get flagged for copyright. I'm also sorry that this is out of focus. So now we're on to loops and you can use the loop in and loop out buttons like on a CDJ. Also the reloop exit is loop on and loop off. Whatever the loop size is set to when you press that button it will set a loop. The same controls work on the Z2 as normal you can move the loop backwards and forwards using the wave search zoom function and that just skips forward whatever the size of the loop is and then you can use call to change the size of the loop and likewise the Z2 all of the all of the controls on the Z2 just work as normal So the jog wheel is using the same routines as when I did the CDJ800 with the velocity. The jog pressure activates scratch mode. If you don't press the jog, the outside is just like a, a pitch bend nudge. Um, I can tweak that in the software and you can also tweak that in Traktor. And now we can see when it's pressed down, it activates scratch mode. It doesn't track 100%, but it's quite close. Good enough for somebody like me that doesn't really scratch. I wouldn't recommend this for scratch routines. So tempo range and master tempo, change the tempo range up and down or you can just keep pressing the tempo range and it will scroll through. And then the pitch um, is using 14 bit MIDI commands so we can get the full resolution from the Teensy, which is a 10-bit MIDI. So um, we convert that up. So we get a really nice smooth pitch range from the MIDI, MIDI device. We also see that the NeoPixel in the middle 
receives its data from tractor. So as the track goes faster and slower, the ring changes the speed that it rotates at. So let's take a look underneath. So this is a Teensy 3.6, which is their brand new board. Runs a lot faster than the one that I did on the CDJ 800. Has a lot more inputs and outputs, which allowed me to access the buttons directly, uh, rather than the way that I did on the CDJ 800, where we used analog inputs and worked the same as the CDJ does. It makes life a lot easier for the programming. So thank you for watching.